Hi, welcome to the Creation Station. Stefan Obroff here. I wanted to answer a couple of questions about virtual orchestrations, strings and symphonic orchestrations inside of pop music or film scoring. I got this one particular question I found worthy of addressing in this video. That's why I'm uh, doing this particular video. And it was um, a gentleman who had asked, is there an easy orchestra that sounds great out of the box? When I, that's a really interesting question, as in the sense of, you know, is there a, an easy saxophone sound that sounds great out of the box? And I assume that his question of this gentleman included, no matter what you throw at it, or is it just if we do a little light um, music for the background for the elevator, or for a serious recording? Because, you know, if there were a light, easy so orchestral sound, that out of the box sounds great for everything you throw at it, please tell me about it. Please tell me about it. Because I do not know if such a thing exists. And in my experience, it doesn't. I have the 70-70 rule. And the 70-70 rule is either you get 70 guys into one room with a really well-written score and let them work for one hour, then you've got like maybe a whole record's worth of string arrangements covered. Or you work for 70 hours because you're one guy. So either 70 guys for one hour or it's one guy for 70 hours. So anyways, this is the video. I wanted to explain this to you uh, with a little sound example. Here is the bridge of a song that I'm currently working on. Listen to the this big pop ballad. It's a big, old school, beautiful pop ballad. Listen to this and see what the strings are doing and the whole orchestra is doing, okay? Here we go. So this is an incredibly dense orchestration for a major, major emotional strong point of the song in the bridge. This happens to be, in this particular song, the strongest point. So I wanted to just show you, talking about again, is there an easy sound that sounds great out of the box? Yes. Okay. Let me show you the sound that I'm using that sounds great out of the box. And I'm going to go down here into my strings. I'm going to open the Sordino Ensemble and gonna play a good here it is all right so I'm gonna play just a little bit listen to this So one of the things that we're, you can see right away, I can play it, first of all, not only in the violin register, I can start way up high. That's probably the top note. That's the top note, and it goes all the way down to... All right, so it sounds beautiful, and that's a sound that's very, very strongly used in this song. However, uh, did you notice when that there was this one string line? Let me point it out for you. I'm going to solo out this particular line. Let me make them a little larger here in the magnification. Let's listen to this. Uh, 
All right, so if I try that to do that with that sound that I was just using, let's see. Let's see what happens. If I'm going to use this sound, I'm going to play it. Well, first of all, can you see? You probably guys can't see my contact. Let me open it up. Here we go. You see the little keyboard down here. Here are the notes I'm playing. See that right down there? I'm going to try to play this run now, this fast run. Oh, let me try it again. So what just happened? So when if I hold a note long, the sound builds up and gets loud enough. But for the faster notes, it's not loud enough. So what just happened? Here's the answer to the question, to the gentleman who asked, is there an, a great orchestral sound that sounds great out of the box? Yes. For example, the sound I have here, the Ensemble Sardino L. Schmidt 1 here. That sound sounds beautiful as long as you play these chords in a certain tempo, you don't get too fast, the orchestra can keep up. The truth is, you're going to need a sound, a really good sound for each and every expression that the orchestra has to then perform. In the case of that one down here, this really fast run, let's look at that again. This guy here is actually done with a marcato patch, which can do those fast notes. Let's look at that. So that sound, let's take a look. Let's, um, let's go there. Let me find the MIDI performance of it. There, there it is. Let me open it up. Aha. So this sound can do it, right? And my other sound can't do it. So the thing I'm trying to translate to you so what, to show you what you're up against when you get into virtual orchestration, you're going to have to wrestle each sound to the ground a little bit. Each sound will require, and each musical expression like marcato, staccato, colenio, and so forth, and uh, of course these beautiful broad polyphonic chord meanderings, those require attention and the, the, those require a different recording of the orchestra. That means that one patch that works for one thing is not going to necessarily work for anything else but that one expression. So it's almost like you hire a, an incredible orchestra. You know, you're the conductor. You're coming to, uh, let's say, uh, a like a mid-sized town and they have a great orchestra. And you show them the chart and they say, oh, you know what, um, Stefan, we can do the legato passage, but over here there is something like a we can't really do that. You gotta actually have to hire a different orchestra to do that. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. So by addressing the faster passages with a marcato sound, I can ensure that the marcato passage gets realized and that it sounds really, really good. If I try to do the same thing once again with the Sardino Ensemble over here, let me do the same thing. Wait, oops, <laughs> can't hear it. So it just washes out, right? It doesn't have any definition because the sound was recorded in a legato fashion and it has a slow climb till it even gets to any sensible impact and it has no attack on it. So some people do this by simply addressing different patches, like this patch is, I call it a legato patch, and it's also polyphonic. But it cannot do the staccato thing. So if I do the staccato, there's no, it doesn't have any power. So if I do the same thing now, go into back down to the mercados over here, Oh, those are, I'm so sorry, those are only violins. So let's play a little higher register. So th those can do a lot of the things that I require, which have a fast expression. So you can see that either you're going to have to choose 
a different MIDI channel and a different MIDI patch altogether. One that does the beautiful legato chord things and another one that does these fast marcato staccato things for these fast runs. Or you're going to get something called a key switch um, where you have a patch, for example, that has key switch functions in it. And um, Spitfire is one of those companies that's really strong on that level. Let me see if we have the Spitfire strings here. Not sure if I can turn those on to show you what that looks like. Uh, so there you can switch expressions, and I'll just explain to you in a second what that is. Let's see if this will come online. Yes, it is. All right, here's my Spitfire strings. What do we have in there? Uh-huh. Okay, let me open the user interface. Aha, uh -huh. this one does have three different expression possibilities in there. One of them is, let's see, this is consordino with dampers, so it's a mellower sound, and then has long harmonics, and then just long notes, period. In that case, you would assign three different keys or MIDI buttons and you can then switch between these three different expressions that come out of the same patch. But in essence, this is the exact same thing that I'm doing. They're loading different performance aspects of the orchestra, and then you address those with hitting a key and say, all right, now I want you to play the staccato stuff, and then you hit another key when you come to the mellow or, or melodious parts and so forth. So either you switch it uh, inside of a patch, like here with a Spitfire patch, with key switches, or you just do what I do in the case of LA scoring strings. You create separate MIDI channels and separate patches for all the expressions. And then you have to jump between these lanes. So sometimes I might work on the super fast one here for uh, quite a while and get all my staccato lines in. And then I jump back up to the Sordino patches to the to the orchestral things which are mellower and more chordal like for example here's an example So there's not much going on however um, that will make more sense when the other orchestration is added up on top but now let me uh, add in the layer of fast things that sits on top of it. So there's a whole bunch of things are happening now. Alone by itself, it didn't sound that great. Let's do it again. Sordino only. And now I'm going to add the super fast ones that were done with the Marcato patch back in. So that is the principal uh, challenge of virtual orchestration, is that there is no orchestra that will do these expressions automatically. For example, if you play something slow and chordal in the left hand and you decide to go in the right hand and play something like that, that is this really fast moving line that you just heard up here. Right? There is no such thing technically out there that is able of doing that. So that means I'm going to realize one thing with my main orchestra probably in one pass in, uh, in this Sardino patch up here, and then as I'm improvising or as I'm playing, I might think, you know, I'm going to have to outline this again with a faster sound so I can get that expression realized, you know. So that's, that's one aspect. That means every aspect of musical expression, for example, fast or slow, already requires two different patches and two different MIDI channels, or a key switch on the patch that can switch between these two types of sounds. It's the same deal. In both cases, those are different recordings that get addressed, either by changing a MIDI channel in a patch or using a key switch. 
and then have the patch switch between its two layers of recording. This is the reason why they say it's 70 guys for one hour to get a good orchestral recording in, or one guy works for 70 hours. And that's been my experience. Let's look at the other aspects really quick of this performance here. Here's what's in there. So we had looked at the Sordinos. We had looked at the, let me, uh, okay, let me switch them on one by one. I had realized that I needed a little bit more clarity and I took what they call a first chair violin, uh, which sounds like this. So that is actually, it sounds like a single violin recorded in an orchestral room, which is really, really good. It's also from LA Scoring Strings. That's in there. Let's add that in. The next thing I have in there, in order to support the cello clarity, I overdubbed the cellos, which do this. And those are sounding nice, but I thought this should be even more aggressive. So I got another mono, uh, a single cello with a lot of vibrato. And layered it on top of that sound. Uh, what else do we have? There's more things down here. Here, in the same passage, I have this expression here. First, fast violin, there's a little more. This is another overdub, just to duplicate things, to fatten up something. Um, then from the swam strings, I have this here. This is um, something I like to do, is to take a single string and um, put a lot of vibrato on it. In this case, that would be actually called moltissimo vibrato. This is maximum vibrato. Um, I did the same thing with the viola down here. Listen to this. So if you add all these things in together, let's see what that sounds like. And there's one more patch missing. Wait, the solo cello is also missing. That belongs in here. The solo cello does this. That's probably the most aggressive attack that really pierces through. This is all about getting the impact that I'm seeking. You know, if stuff sounds washy, I will probably overdub something uh, with a very aggressive sounding patch to make uh, the expression shine through. One more thing here is one thing I really love from the Spitfire. Uh, um, uh, I think this is from Mural, something that goes from non vibrato to vibrato. Listen to this gorgeous sound. So you can see they start very still, they sound very still because they have almost no vibrato. And then later on in this passage, I'm dialing in the vibrato. So once again, listen to this string section. That is 10 different tracks of different expressions and different sounds added in together to make up for, the, for that width and depth of expression that my little virtual orchestra can do here. Right, so now, if you think that that's all the symphony orchestra does, there's still holes in the arrangement, and I will explain why. Because other instruments take over a certain function and a certain textural shift. Because if it were only strings, it would sound 
fatiguing after a while. So I'm turning on oboe, alto flute, bassoon, uh, there's nothing in here. French horns, really important. Euphoniums as well. They bring in a lot of depth. What do I, What else do I have here? Hang on. So now we're listening to the pretty much the full symphonic complement. <laughs> there let's not forget the really really important member of the orchestral family the harp once again here's what the harp does there you go here we go now let me put the piano in underneath then you can see why there are still holes harmonic holes in this whole concept here here's the piano as we enter the bridge. And so forth. So now that you've seen the things we just discussed before, you can sort of get a grasp on how many different layers of expression are needed to make an orchestra speak like that. Does the orchestration that I'm producing here and creating here, does it support what the lyric says? Does it support the moment emotionally? And the answer, yes, it is. Through the entire song, I have very, very deep emotional connection with what's going on here. So uh, let me unmute everything and just show you the passage one more time from uh, just throughout this particular section as it, and then it, till it slows down towards the end. Anyways, and then the song goes to a very, very lovely, uh, calm ending. Um, so that's what I wanted to share with you today. To answer that question, is there an easy orchestra that sounds great out of the box? Well, I guess you guessed by now that the answer is no. If you want to throw anything at it, let's see, like a Rimsky Corsair, like Scheherazade or something like that, a, a fantastic classical work, you need to do even more work. So... It is, we need to put our orchestra together and put, pack all of the expressions in that we're going to need for each given song. In my case, that just happens to be most of LA scoring strings. And let me show you to you once again what I'm using here. Um, so here's the ensemble, oops, here's the ensemble patch. Sordino Violins is a legato program that actually creates tone notes where you can hear the violins going, ba, wa. they connect legato with a, with a glissando or a portamento to the next note, but it's only a monophonic patch. 
Sordino cello, same thing. It's a monophonic patch. Ensemble tremolo. I love using the tremolos as, um, as risers. Like, you can use a tremolo and fade it up, and it does this, you know, and use that uh, to create a transition. Because that's the other thing. We need to be able to create musical moments where tension is created and anticipation is created. Um, the next one is um, also a monophonic patch that's very can play very fast notes. Here is another fast note maker, violins full marcato. Um, this is also very important. Violins full legato sus uh, sustains, non vibrato de vibrato, because the non vibrato sound has this stillness to it. This is also a very p fast patch. Um, this is another monophonic patch, and that's it. So you can see on, uh, on 70 MIDI channels, we have so many different expressions, only from LA scoring strings, and then I added other things in from um, Spitfire. So the work is super intense, but as you assemble your orchestra and you do the performances and you sort of work into each aspect of the composition, then it's, it's probably for me one of the most emotionally gratifying things on earth to hear the symphony come about. And, and sometimes it comes about in a way that you didn't even expect. It comes about in a way that just floors you. Oftentimes I'll just sit here and be like, oh my God, I'll be crying. So um, I wanted to share that with you just to shine some light on the intense work that has to be done around orchestration. But the effect that you can get with it, you can be more versatile than an actual orchestra, especially when it comes to orchestrating contemporary music, Brazilian music, and even certain amounts of film scoring. Um, because sometimes there are limits to what an orchestra could do, and very, very well-known composer have been known to have to use synthesizer strings to layer them on top of actual symphonic recordings because a symphonic recording couldn't realize one of the aspects they were hearing in their imagination, in their inner ears, so they would layer these synthesizer strings on top. That's it for today, everybody. Uh, please uh, subscribe to this channel. And give the video a like if you see it on YouTube. Uh, or if you're not on YouTube, come by uh, my Facebook channel. It's uh, The link is obviously wherever you see this video. Also, if you'd like to learn this, I teach this online now that we're in the world of Zoom. This is still, by the way, this was filmed on um, December 27th, uh, 2020. So we're still in lockdown. And I've been doing an unbelievable amount of work like this online. I learn and I teach engineering and learn engineering online. Uh, just did a session yesterday. It's fantastic. So you can learn so much. I have several students across the world. So you can sign on to learn this from me, whatever I know. I am probably very capable of teaching. So please um, feel free to reach out. Send me an email, uh, which should go to admin at stefanoberoff.com. That should also be in the link, at least of the YouTube video. But most of all... Um, I want to support you in your dream to get orchestral arrangements and orchestral soundscapes created for film scoring, for underscoring pop music or whatever music you love, you know? So with that, I'm going to sign out. Uh, this is Stefan Obroff signing out from the Creation Station. God bless. Stay creative, stay healthy, and uh, see you soon in another video. Take good care.